Hi everyone, it's Bren here. Welcome to this week's garden update where I'm going to show you all of my seedlings plus some turmeric which I have growing in a pot. Plus I'll show you how I save my cucumber seeds and we'll take a look at the large glass gem corn harvest I did yesterday. So please just sit back, relax for a few minutes and let's get into it now. Today I'm harvesting this very large overgrown cucumber which I have left on the vine so that I can save its seeds. There it is. This is a variety called white spine and what you're looking at is one of its fruit fully mature. It has changed from white to this yellow orange colour which indicates its fully ripen. I know the seeds in here will be great for saving. Saving cucumber seeds is really simple and I've got everything laid out here on this chopping board to get the process started. As I cut this open I just want to mention that it's really important to save your cucumber seeds from a plant that has been really healthy and disease free. Here's a close-up of one of the cucumber seeds and you can see that it's coated in this gel-like substance similar to that of tomato seeds. And like tomato seeds, cucumber seeds go through this fermentation process to remove that gel coating. So I'll just show you quickly now the first stage of what you have to do. So I'm just scooping out all of these seeds as much as I can with the pulp too. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Hopefully none of them will run off this chopping board. The next step is to pop all of these into a jar. This one here and I have placed a inch or two of water at the bottom. I'm going to leave it in there for approximately three days and what you will find is the gel will dissolve or come away from the seed. It will start to rise to the top along with all the pulp and then what you will be left with is a viable seeds which um, sink to the bottom and at the top you may have some seeds which aren't any good for saving. Obviously these aren't ready yet. They haven't begun to ferment but let's pretend that it's now three days later and we'll just go through the process or the next step. So you will come in here with your spoon and you'll skim off the top layer which will have the pulp, the bad seeds and any of that gel, remove that. And then all that you'll be left with in the jar is some of the water and the good seeds at the base that are viable and you wanna save. You then grab yourself a sieve to drain off the water. Once you've done that, the seeds that are left in here get placed on a paper towel and you leave them be for about five to seven days until they have completely dried out. Then all you have to do is store them for the next growing season. I've grabbed myself an envelope. I'll be popping them in here. You know, it's clearly labeled with the name and the time of year you've saved the seeds. You can also use a brown paper bag or jars too to pop the seeds in and store this now in a dry cool. I like to put them also in a dark place until spring. There's one more point I'd like to make when it comes to saving cucumber seeds. And that is a lot of cucumber varieties can cross pollinate. What this essentially means is that pollen from one cucumber plant can go on to the flowers of another and vice versa. And when this occurs, sometimes what happens is when you save those seeds where you have two different or cucumber varieties growing close together and you save those seeds, the cucumber that may grow from those seeds could be different to the original mother plant. So just be aware of that. Now for me, the seeds that I am saving from the white spine cucumber, I am well aware that I may have a bit of cross pollination happening. And that is because where I planted that was very close to a different cucumber variety called lemon. Yeah, it was just lemon. I think I'll pop it on the screen if I'm wrong and the thing is I don't know really what's going to happen but you know I love that I love the excitement of growing a saved seed and seeing what happens but ideally if you do want a particular variety of cucumber try and not grow any other varieties close by so you don't have any issues with cross-pollination 
Over the last couple of weeks, I've picked the odd glass gem corn, which I've shown you. But yesterday evening, I did my biggest harvest, picking all of these. And that's really what you're seeing there is only about half of them because underneath I have so many more, which I haven't opened. Some of these are absolutely stunning. One of my favorites being this one here. Let's see if I can get some better light to show you. It's got these lilac tones and you know when I opened it the first thing it reminded me of was you know the Disney movie Frozen I think the colors the shades here are so similar I was really drawn to this one it has a lot of reds deep reds and pinks too and the odd pop of white here or there just so many of them take a look at my seedlings they are certainly not colorful like that glass gem corn but I'm really happy with their progress in here I have a lot of cold hardy annuals a mix of fruit vegetables and flowers I have already put quite a bit in the ground but what's left here is this tray of onions which I showed you a good few weeks back. I'm trying to experiment this year where I'm growing them in these little cells first with the hopes of transplanting them later once they get a bit larger. Now some of them did get their tops nipped off but I'm happy to report that they're starting to shoot back. You can see there the difference between the fresh shoots and the ones that have you know been in here a while and are growing nicely i've also got like spinach and beetroot kale i'm just having a quick look at all the labels lettuce pak choy cauliflower and then i have a few flowers like stock they're good to grow in the cooler climate i've also got some poppies snapdragons dephiliums uh, foxgloves and then I did purchase a couple of punnets of these beautiful pansies which are actually a spreading variety they can cover up to well I mean let's say about 40 50 centimeters and they have beautiful flowers which are actually edible sorry I got cut off I was gonna say they're edible too I'm now over by the container garden and you can see some of the autumn leaves have made their way into the pot the weather is definitely cooling down now. A great time for all of these cold, hardy winter crops. I know I've shown you these before, but just in case you're new, in this pot I have lots of kohlrabi, which are starting to swell up. I was thinking they're kind of quite high up off the level of the soil, so I might put some straw in here just to help to support them a bit better. Some further back, like that one's starting to get, you know, growing rapidly at this stage. There's bok choy, lettuce, beetroot, which is also starting to bulk up a bit. You can see one down there. Actually, and I do have a few weeds in here. I feel like I've neglected it for a while. <laughs> I haven't had to water it because we're just constantly getting rain. So by not watering it, I haven't really been checking it either, which is kind of maybe not a great thing. Here I've got leeks, rainbow chard, carrots, that need to be thinned out. Oh, look at that. These are the Paris market carrots. There's a little small one forming. That's exciting. My patience got the better of me and I pulled out one of the stems to see how things are growing underneath the soil. And I was so happy to see some young turmeric tubers in there. This darker part is the original piece of turmeric which I planted well one of many in that pot and then if you come a bit further down you can see all these lovely yellowy orange pieces are the new growth they're still quite young I reckon I'm gonna try and leave them in the ground as long as possible until the frost arrives and then I will harvest them like this one here it's still quite pale but that is really exciting to see that it seems to be pretty happy and growing well. 
it is certainly not all sunshine and roses when it comes to my seedlings a lot of the ones that i planted out into the raised beds a few weeks back are being absolutely attacked it's a combination of the cabbage white butterfly caterpillars and also slugs and snails I'm going to have to keep a better eye on these plants coming out and checking the back of the foliage regularly to see if I can spot any caterpillar eggs. None today and I can't spot any caterpillars. I'm really kind of thinking that this is more slugs and snails. It has been raining quite a lot which really tends to increase their population. So I think what I may have to start doing is coming out here in the evening at night time with a torch and gathering all of those slugs and snails, popping them into a bucket. I've done this in the past and for me, it seems to work really well. I'm not concerned about this. I know the plants will bounce back. And look at what's happening down here. There's so many seedlings. This often happens in autumn time when the days are still a bit warm. You have seedlings germinating like this. A lot of them are probably tomatoes, cucumbers, um, even flowers like zinnias, but none of them will grow to maturity because in a few weeks time and um, the frost will just kill them off so to save myself a bit of bother i'm not gonna you know go and pull all of these out they're not encroaching too much on my seedlings at the moment so i'm not bothered and i don't really want to make extra work for myself look what i'm spotting in here lots of cucumelons they're all over the place at the moment i was passing by this nasturtium patch and I noticed that the foliage has been shredded. You know where that's from? We had a storm last night with some hailstones and it has <laughs> slashed through these. Not too concerned, not a big deal, but it just shows you the force of nature sometimes. Well, we have now come to the end of this week's garden update. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what I've been up to over the last seven days. I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead. Stay safe and I'll see you again next Friday.